Hi there, it's Scott Hoppy, and we're looking at uh, how to use Asana in your accounting firm, uh, 2020 edition. What's been fun about making these videos over, over time, um, since we've been using Asana for about six years at this point, is seeing the evolution of it. Primarily watching the numbers of, of, of teams as well as projects uh, get really simplified. So you'll notice that if you've looked at some of the previous videos. So I have right now um, a demo version of the Asana setup that we have here. And, and I'm, we're doing that just to so we don't look at all the live data that we have at this point, but it's pretty close. And then I'll have a, a live version of our onboarding template for new hires. So structurally, uh, Asana is organized as an, you have an organization that for us, that's why blue the company. Then you have teams, the teams, this one, the demo, um, and then you have projects. And then underneath the projects, you have tasks, sections and tasks. And then every task ha can have as many subtasks as you want. So for us, how we structure Asana is every client engagement or work order, um, pretty much everything that we're going to bill for uh, has a separate task underneath projects. So projects is our primary spot that we go. Um, sale, sales is where we're going to have a, a tracking new leads. Client growth is where we uh, spot opportunities to add value to new existing clients. Um, Why Blue has a background of, about the firm, colors, uh, and then it also holds all the SOPs and templates. Um, you can add tasks to multiple projects. So you'll see some of those templates that matter to projects here, they exist at the bottom. And they're also inside of white blue. And then I have this projects archive and that's a spot where we'll annually, I'll go through all the completed tasks inside of projects and just and move them over to archive. And that's because I can set up different edit rights there. So if I want, to leave the tasks so they're searchable and have that type of history kept in Asana, but I don't want others to be able to edit already completed tasks. I just, I use projects for that purpose. So I can give people like comment only access or view only access. Okay. The other couple things that we have here are reports. Um, I know I didn't make heavy use of them in the past and now, now they're pretty, I consistently use these three reports. Um, two of them I post on Mondays to Slack and one I post uh, an image of on Friday. And the other section that you'll notice has been updated is my tasks and I've added a couple buckets there. A lot of detail uh, is written and there's image examples in our Asana guide article. Um, that's on our webpage. I'll also post it in the comments section here. Um, but what I'll, let me still go over high level how we set up projects, and this is where we'll spend most of our time. So looking at projects, I, we're, I'm almost primarily in the list view. I barely touch board. I never touch timeline. Don't touch calendar. Definitely don't touch progress. Don't go to forms. I don't look at files, and I don't look at conversations. That makes it easy. I sit here and list. Uh, and then in terms of customizing my view, for our tasks, I have sections, um, special, iterate, notices, quarterlies, returns, off dates, March 15th, blah, 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 bookkeeping, templates. Okay. Inside of my view, I usually have a default to showing incomplete tasks, and I sort within sections by due date. Uh, I don't have a I, I don't have the rule running right now, but I do have a rule here that when a task gets marked complete, it gets uh, it's staged, updated um, to e-filed. That way, I don't run into a situation where like uh, this task's marked complete, but the stages open items are out to the client because that that doesn't make sense. Um, in terms of apps, the connections, Google Drive, we have LinkedIn, and Slack, we connect. Uh, otherwise, we use Google Scripts and Zapier to kind of automate and pull reports and get data out of Asana. Here's the fields view. Um, 
the toggle switch here is just is what's visible. So let's get rid of assignee. Let's add it back. There you go. So these are the ones we show: assignee, due date, stage, date last touched, comment, pro, project set of tags. Okay. The custom ones are stage, date last touched, comment, paid, date ready for prep, uh, and Slack. Okay. And the ones that I make visible here in, from the specials or the custom fields are stage, date, last touch, and comment. Um, so here's our stages. Uh, there's 10 of them. There used to be like 20. <laughs> so another, another simplification. Uh, that for 2020, what we did was we, we, we cut the list down in half. We added colors. We added emojis. The, the emojis have been such an easy way to get a read on what's going on where projects at much easier than read like than reading work in progress um reading work in progress and just seeing the text versus a gear icon it there's just no comparison uh but okay so we have we have our tasks name our task names uh i we like to put a parent if we this we call these parent tasks so every parent task is a work order every parent task represents something that's billable or work that we're doing for a client. And we give it this little uh, emoji kind of for later on when you're looking at subtasks um, because next to the subtask name will be the parent task name. And when you add the emoji there, it just makes it really obvious that it's a subtask to a parent task. Um, assignee is the person that's responsible to seeing the project through from start to finish. They may not be doing every step, but they're the person that we're gonna talk to if we're, we have a question about what's going on with the project or um, maybe a client question. So in this case, like we'll have a client one, client two. This is a equity tracker, Brittany's responsible. Um, there's no due date, we haven't started it. It was last touch in July um, and it's tagged to the client. That's, that's fine. Um, let's go down and look at some of the return ones though. So you get into the spot here with like with amendments. Uh, we have the due date set up. I'm responsible. The stage is work in progress, and the date last touched uh, is tomorrow, eight <laughs> twenty-eight. Right. So it's all it's all pretty pretty good. Um, and then we would use the the comments field here to kind of give a really high level comments. Uh, like you'll notice down here, March 15th, client one, client two, uh, stage, date, ready to start. Great. I have context. Um, so we use these three in tandem. Stage tells you where it is. Date last touch tells you how stale it is. And the comment uh, lets you also know is the comment relevant because it's, you know, initial and dated, who left it. Um, and also just gives you a high level of where we're at. Inside of a task itself, um, there's a few more fields. You'll see the Slack channel. Is it paid? We'll just say, yeah, this one's paid. Um, this one is ready to prepare on 826. Uh, but if in terms of like detailed comments, um, detailed status reports would be dropped into the, the comment field here. And this would be what you're looking for when you're trying to get the deeper story on a project. Um, however, you'd write a really high level up here so we can get a sense of what's going on with the project without having to drill into every single task and checking on the story. Um, the other thing that's been incredibly helpful is adding in this task dependencies. So what we're looking at here is, okay, work in progress. Let's say Andy's going to do this one. And I'm going to say tomorrow. OK, so when I when I'm done with work in progress, this task dependency is going to be lifted. So right now, review one's waiting on me to finish preparing the tax return. Um, and that's just one view here. But really, where it becomes really helpful is when you're getting to my tasks, um, because it helps each person manage their own tasks uh, easier. And we'll look at that soon. Uh, but let's go back and look into, click into here, and you'll see dependent on, ah, oh, from Scott Hoppy, that's due today. Okay, very cool. 
Okay, so you generally have these sections, uh, and then the tags for clients are blue, um, the tags for templates are yellow. And the reason why we do that is if you're going in here and you wanna make a copy of the template, a default is to have the tags checked. So when it's yellow like this, and we, we copy it over and we don't delete the template tag, it's very obvious. It's very obvious that there's a yellow tag there. Um, not so obvious because I have it like really hidden like that. So you can like, it's just quick for spot checking and fixing things up if, if there's an issue. Very rare, I don't think I run into that one. I'd say what's the what's the most common thing that we really you need really need to work on is making sure someone doesn't check off the parent task accidentally, um, because you want that parent task to be checked off when the return or the project's 100% done. It's paid for, engagement letter signed, it's filed, the client's happy. Okay, then we check it off. Um, anytime before then, we want to leave this alive. So how do we like capture that? Uh, because anyone can click check, mark it complete. Uh, we track it a couple ways, um, but I'd say the easiest method is I have Zapier send me a notification in Slack when a, prod, when a parent task gets marked complete. Um, by doing that, it, things don't fall through the cracks. And I can make sure that, okay, whatever got checked off was supposed to be checked off. Let's look at um, the next view is my tasks. And so we get into my task and we'll see here, I, I have a few buckets that I set up. Um, in process, on hold, parent task. And in process, you'll see that work in progress from client one to due today. Okay, great, I can start that. I have another task to finalize a return that's due tomorrow, but I can see real quickly that I can't even start if I wanna start it. I'm still waiting for them to finish. Before we didn't use task dependencies as much and it got really confusing to see finalized return tomorrow or Friday or whatever the day is in the future. And, and you weren't exactly clear if it was ready for you to do it or not ready. So really have enjoyed using task dependencies. Um, you may have had a question like, well, why do we have these, these taxis and notes? Um, and we had it underneath that iterate uh, section inside of projects. This is a spot where the team captures comments and we collect all of our notes from taxis about what went wrong, what was inefficient, where could we improve, what needs corrections on the work papers, all that. And we put it in there and then we could have a post-mortem um, about it. Uh, usually we do that around now um, and we've, we've already started it for ourselves, but uh, otherwise like we kind of iterated on it live. So if it's an easy fix, we'll do it now. If it's something that needs to be talked about more, um, We'll set it up for that. Okay, so that gets you the parent, and then the, that gets you what's in process, what's on hold. So I'm saying that's on hold because we're going to do it again in October. Then the parent task bucket is a spot where I just, to keep my list clean, I put all the parent tasks in its own spot, and then I can kind of scan through for all the things I'm responsible for and just making sure that they're touched or updated or um, uh, just gives me a quick check of like, what's mine? Let's look at some of these reports. Uh, let's just look at one and then um, you can go to the article to, to see in more detail. So this is on Monday. We look at completed tasks over the last seven days. That way I can see everything that was done in the week before. So this is the search settings. It's only projects. It's only completed tasks. It's within the last seven days. Okay. When you do that, to, you, you'll be here and there's a save report. You'll click that button and you can name it like I did. Um, I also do sort by assignee. So here I can see like, oh, okay, Brittany, she got client two set up for prep. Work in progress was done for client two. I can see the dates, great. And that all happened within the last seven days. Because um, that's when not, and it's not based off of when the due date was, it's based off of when this gets checked. Same thing, oh, Scott set up client one, great. Those are subtasks. So you, you can see how this subtask to parent task name is really helpful when there's a parent task logo. Um, and then here's the parent task by itself. And here's an unassigned, ah, I wanted to show you this. A tag when a client leaves, go, we change it from a blue color to a red color. It just makes it super clear that it's a past client. Same thing inside of Gmail, the client label that matches the Asana tag, it matches their Slack channel name. 
we changed that tag from blue to red. So when an old client emails in, it's immediately tagged red. Uh, and it's really obvious that it's a, it's a past client. Okay, now we want to, we'll just take a quick peek at sales, it's leads. Um, we have date last touch, I have quotes in there, I have comments all the same. If With quote, if you put in numbers, you can get like the sum total. So I kind of, all of our new leads come through Calendly and then they get dropped in here. Um, the information, here we go. The information from the Calendly invite gets dropped in, great. Uh, and then I can just move people through it. If they go from lead, qualified, upload, started, proposal made, closed, cold. Here's some SOPS template stuff. Client growth, same thing. Um, at, throughout the year, if we if we spot something for a client, we want to talk about it. We just we just dro drop it in here, so we at least have it, it on our radar. So like an R and D study for a client, um, we can see that. Then we'll move it through the stages. Have we emailed them about it? Have we held a pro the meeting? Has it been approved? Um, maybe we've talked about it. And it's not approved. They want to do it later, like next year. <clears throat> we can put it into holding. Get into why blue. Uh, we have the manifesto and then all the SOPs and templates, so guides, cheat sheets, resources, all that. Um, within the goals, though, this is like our 2020 goals on sales, client growth, and how to stay ahead of competitors. Uh, we track that out um, just so we can revisit it and discuss it together. Uh, project archives, you don't have to go over. But we'll switch over to, um, this is our actual Asana. And there's a second team. So here's our live one, Y Blue, as a team. And here's our HR, our second team that I couldn't show you uh, because that other Asana project was, or the other Asana that I was on is just a demo and I couldn't set up a second team. So here's my second team with HR and my template for onboarding someone new. And this is, this is kind of what we do, right? Uh, we, I want you to see this, um, but then we send them through like, okay, go through all these stages, take three hours max, onboard yourself. We've had a lot of success with this. I highly recommend it, but I also have a separate video that um, shows <laughs> the older setup that's a little bit longer, but it accomplishes the same thing. So now, you know, we have these one, section one, section two, section three, and someone can onboard by themselves. And they're, you know, the benefit is they, they can walk away and be really effective pretty, uh, pretty quick at the firm. Um, doesn't take a whole lot of handholding. They can go zero to 60. We have a lot of custom integrations with Slack, with G Sheets, uh, and, and having Asana get information out to like Google Data Studio for visualization. That's all way beyond the scope of you just setting things up here. Um, I think between the article and this video, you're gonna get you know really, really far ahead. And all you need to do if you want to sign up for Asana is I have a 10% off coupon code uh, for new subscriptions. Find that link on my on my webpage, whyblue.com. Uh, I'll also include that inside of the uh, the comments section here. And you're gonna be you're you're gonna be off to the races. So let me know if you have questions. Happy to help out. I get I get them all year long and from all over the world, which is a lot of fun. Uh, lots from the US, UK, and South Africa. <laughs> so I'm, I'm happy to work with you there. Uh, I should probably give a shout out to Australia and New Zealand too. They, they come up quite a bit. Um, I'm happy to work with you and, and help you roll something out or get a custom integration going. Um, you can always hire us for that too. But uh, otherwise, if it's a simple question, you can bounce it off of me and I'm happy to respond. All right, well, have a, enjoy this and have a nice day. Bye-bye. <laughs>